Okay, thank you for uh, staying there. It's not easy to be the last one of uh, such a long day. So hopefully, uh, maybe you, you'll be free in uh, 20 minutes, maybe smarter, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, semantic uh, between all data sets. So we're talking about semantic metadata. Metadata is just what is describing the data. So I would more introduce like it's semantic in, in terms of, of data. And the metadata are there to, to tell uh, what connection this data has to the rest of the world. So we see uh, the talk is about towards better data platforms. Uh, I'm Florent Gravin, and I uh, present this talk on behalf of Olivia. Uh, she's uh, working at Camp to Camp as well, and uh, she prepared this talk, and she couldn't come. So I'm uh, I have in, in charge to, to to talk about this topic. So thanks to her for preparing the slide. Um, so. The, the goal of this talk is uh, to demystify a bit what is semantic, so maybe all of you knows exactly what is semantic. I hope not, so we, 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 we can uh, explain a bit how it is about. And then I will illustrate what it is about by a practical example in, in, uh, in real life and in between data sets. And I will talk a bit about uh, GeoNetwork because semantic is about the link between data and what, what are the data, so the metadata are here to describe them, and s we have platform, we have catalogs, and it's interesting to have a view, an overview of uh, how it works nowadays. And the goal of the presentation is also to, to, to see that uh, what we can get out of it, and how it's beneficial, and how it could be more used. So first, what semantic is the meaning, pure meaning in the definition, is, is the meaning is that it's relating to the meaning of the things. Uh, so it's usually used in language or, or, or logic, but semantic data talk about what is the meaning and how we can describe precisely what is the data. So uh, to introduce what it is, what it is I will uh, talk about the RGF, so Resource Description Framework, because there is different manner to represent what is semantic, but the easiest, easiest to understand is through RGF. So RGF just uh, define and introduce the semantic as a triple, like a, a, a trio of three things, a subject, a predicate, and an object. So a metadata, it consists of many, many information about uh, the data set, what it has been produced, when, by who, who, what is linked, what service is it provided by, etc. So there's many, many things, and we try to organize all these things in a semantic way, so to give meaning and not to rely on structured things. And how we do that? By just representing all of, of this information by a subject, a predicate, and an object. So we will call it a statement. So a statement is this triple. And as an example, to understand exactly what it is, this contact is the subject, is of type, the relation, so it describes the relation, the predicate, a person, which is the, an object. So a person, you see that it's a, a, a category, a class. It's something which is standardized. But we can have also this person as a phone number, and then we have a literal. So by giving all this kind of relation between uh, objects, we define w in a semantic way what is a b a a d uh, the data. So if we extend all this relation, like uh, this data set has been uh, published by, or this data set title is, and you have the title, if you represent all of these uh, things all together, it will build a graph, which is quite different from a structural, hierarchical uh, structure of uh, XML or thing like that. So it, it's called a knowledge graph. So it's a graph because you have node, which are the object, and we ha we, you have relation between all these objects. And all the relations are, are defined by, uh, by the predicates. So this graph, actually, you can imagine that you have a graph 
to represent your metadata, but actually it goes far beyond that. Actually, all the web have been designed in a semantic way. It's the, 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 the core uh, principle of uh, Tim Berners-Lee, who, who is the one of the, the inventor of the web. And in 1999, he, or, he already described his dream and his vision about how all the data on the web could be related and connected all together. And he, he planned and he described that the semantic way. So it means that we represent the data how they have been made, etc. But all the data are connected to something which is connected to something which is connected to another data. And actually, we can cover the whole net of all data on the internet. And this is the, the, the real power of semantic. And because it's the core of, of the web, it means that everything could be reachable from just one thing. And it could be by a human, or, but also by a machine. Uh, so this is an example of what is a uh, knowledge graph. So you have uh, you have uh, objects and you have relation, and actually it can diverge from one step, two step, three step. You can have completely different meanings because you jump out in the in in the world wide world wide net, and you have everything. So for instance, a player is born in a place where you have an image about that. You also have school in this place, etc., etc., and it grow, it grow, and it's huge, and it represents the web. Uh, to go f uh, uh, further uh, on uh, on semantic, it's important to to know these two things: ontologies and encoding. So, ontologies, ontologies, sorry, is a collection of terms. So, imagine you have this net and relation between them. All of this has to be standardized because if you even the wheel and you you give new names uh, of the on the relation, you would never be able to join uh, all all these pieces all together. So it has to be standardized, and it's done by uh, through ontologies. So ontologies is a collection of terms, like DCAT is an ontology, uh, Dublin Core Terms is an ontology. So it defines some terms like is type of or is pr published by. So it's a collection of terms. And all these terms, it can be either an object, a predicate, or a subject. For instance, the is class person. Is class is a predicate. It's defined by DCAT, for instance. And uh, a person could be also defined by DCAT or POF or other ontologies. So DCAT is not a format. It's not XML at all. It's an ontology which helps to describe all the links uh, between person, data, and, uh, and, uh, and other things. And it's really important to differentiate that from the encoding. Uh, semantic has nothing related to encoding, to XML, JSON, or other things. So if you think that DCAT is in XML format, it's completely wrong. It's just terms to help you to define in a semantic way the relation between your object. And then you have different encoding, so it means a way that you can lay down uh, your semantic representation. Uh, so it could be XML, but it can be JSON, it can be s anything else. And what it's interesting, so this, th there is an example. So for instance, RGF semantic representation encoded in Turtle. So you have, you have the, 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 the prefix here which tell you what ontology you are referring to, and then you define your predicates. So there is one predicate, B population is of type DCAT dataset, and three other uh, statements, uh, B population as a title, which is p population. So this is an encoding system. You can have DCAT as well uh, encoding in JSON LD, so it's exactly the same graph, the same, the same information, but encoded differently. And then you have maybe what you, you, you know more, um, the, the, the XML RDF representation, where you have Thesaurus, where you, are, you have a DCAT exports, et cetera. It's all the same thing. And actually, the encoding is just a matter of uh, machine processing or thing like that. It's the same graph, and what it is, is just four statements. And a statement, what it is, is three things. 
And all those three things could be either a URI, so a unique URI, which defines something concrete, or a literal, so plain text. So for instance, if you reference to a person, this person is a, is a standard, so it, the, there is a URI uh, to point on of the, this person. There is URI to define the relation because they, are, they come from an ontology. So in the end, all this graph is just a sequence of statements which are defined either by URI or uh, literals. So in the end, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty simple uh, to, 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 to understand. And um, yes, uh, wh 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 why it's, is it useful? Is uh, because um, y we have already a lot of ontology to describe things. They already exist, so we can rely on. And they, come, they became uh, de facto standards like Dublin Core or Forth to, de to design person, so everything already exists. And um, the thing that uh, is interesting within this talk is that, for instance, this exists for forever, it has been existing forever on the web. And when we try to describe metadata in a more complex way, in a more geographical manner, so for instance, ISO, etc., we are actually cutting the bridge between the rest of the, the internet and the web. Uh, because, for instance, um, ISO, only ge geospatial systems are able to understand that. Interoperability is, is, uh, is a thing in geospatial, but actually, if you use semantic, you can reach the, the, the rest of the internet and you can be reached by the, the rest of the internet. So I think it's, there is a huge potential uh, behind, behind this that go, sorry, that go beyond uh, the, 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 um, the ISO uh, representation, for instance. So the, the main difference, if, if we compare, for instance, ISO, which is a structure XML, it relies on schemas. So it's, uh, yes, the, the everything, it's great because you know where an element should go in the schema, so you can understand it, it quickly. It has to be read. Um, while uh, on the semantic things, because it, you are free to represent things the way you want, you need guidelines. So you need a way that help you to, to say, okay, to represent a metadata, you will use this term of Descartes, you will use this, this, this uh, relation of of etc. It helps you on the way. And this is what we call application profile. So when we, we talk about Descartes AP, AP, AP is the guidelines on how to use DCAT for the purpose of uh, describing geographical data, or data, because GeoDCAT IP is for geographical data. One thing which is better as well for uh, about semantic is the backward compatibility. So imagine you need to move from ISO uh, uh, 19.139 to ISO, uh, the, the new one, 115-3. Uh, uh, numbers are al always hard in English. Um, you have to completely rewrite your document. So because one element maybe won't be at the same place in the, the, the other document. So it's very hard to jump from one version to another. And one proof could be that we have just, we just had one upgrade uh, uh, for uh, during the last 15 years. While in semantic, you can always keep your relation um, within your inf the information of your data. So if you have a title, you will always have your title. But if you want to enhance the schema and bring new things, you can just bring new relations and bring new stuff within your, your uh, metadata um, representation. So there is no backward com incompatibility, breaking change, and it's, it's, it's really better to, to move forward with, uh, with semantic. Uh, XML is really easier to read, and while you have complex graph, it's very hard. So what about an adoption? So th that said, I introduced what is it, and in Europe, um, there we, we, are, we had some guidelines, so it hasn't been really adopted in the geographical uh, landscape. We still st uh, on ISO, but now we see something moving with Descartes and the open data, 
and also in Europe, uh, they, they, they try to push uh, forward GeoDecat AP and DCAT AP to represent our metadata in a semantic way. And thanks to CEMIC, which is at the European level, the, um, the center uh, who, who work on that. So GeoDecat AP is a set of good practices that's intended for a uh, European catalog. What is great is that within this knowledge graph represented as GeoDecatAPI, you can extract all the information you need to be Inspire compliant. So there is some, a link that can be made and uh, the CEMIC um, the have, have provided XSL to transform these kind of things to help you on the way. And OGC is also working on GeoDecat without the AP for a non-European uh, uh, specific um, best practice, but sh for, for all the world. So, how it can help to make your, your, your platform better? Uh, so, for instance, what is important is that within the repre semantic representation of your data, you could actually target different uh, ontology and different output. So, it means that, for instance, if you need to represent a decat data set, you can have a relation for that and you can have an another relation for schema.org which is another ontology from Google and you, you can represent everything in the same uh, object. So it means that within the same graph you represent whatever um, model or output you need uh, to be used uh, for, uh, by third party uh, application. And what is great is that there is a lot of tools already existing uh, to, uh, to handle semantics. So in Python, in Java, in JavaScript. And it means that you don't really care about uh, reading and, uh, and writing in all of those formats, schema.org, XML, JSON-LD, you don't care. And you just can focus on uh, what is inside of your knowledge graph and how you want to describe uh, the, the the data. So um, actually, uh, w w what is great as well is that uh, you don't you you don't have to have all this uh, the information within the metadata, but you can refer to external resources, to external objects. So, for instance, the contacts they can be provided as a semantic definition from something else, uh, LDAP or whatever, and you can uh, point to that. The same for linked data set. You can link data set to another platform just by providing a link, a URL, and a predicate. And like that, you can represent uh, all, all the world. Uh, so uh, quick words about uh, GeoNetwork because uh, uh, it's important that uh, we have this kind of things within our platform. So in from Inspire now, it's more about ISO but we saw that from the user experience that people, they want more and more to jump in a semantic way, so there is a lot of export to DECAT, DECAT AP, DECAT Mobility, so various uh, things. So it's, it's, going, it's really going in the, in, in the good way. It's, it's available through uh, GeoNetwork formatters and from uh, CSW output. And uh, GeoNetwork is also able to harvest uh, semantic uh, catalogs. Uh, we also have made some uh, some work because uh, there is uh, a new editor uh, in GeoNetwork UI to be able to load these kind of things. So we are able to load DCAT uh, or DCAT AP and, and to transform that. So I, I think that uh, overall within the this catalog it's quite well uh, supported. But uh, I think that overall the, the, the meaning of the um, of of the so this is a small video of in including importing uh, an XML DCAT, which is written by all these libraries, and a turtle DCAT, and it's the same, and you can make all, all the conversion. And I will conclude that um, all the, the goal of the talk was to de demystify what is it, and I, I would like to bring the you the feeling that Everything is there for, for a while, and I think that the way we, 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 we've been, we, we, we went with uh, ISO wasn't uh, maybe the, the right way, and I think that if we start something, we always need to think about representing it the semantic way, because it's really easier afterwards to work with all of these little pieces 
instead of uh, having a huge and, uh, and, and a hard structure to understand, to parse, to, to transform, to, yes, and to manipulate. So, uh, and yes, and, and it will be, it, it, it makes us able to connect to the, to the rest of the world. So for instance, imagine if you have your metadata, in your metadata you have a small JSON-LD representation of what is it in a semantic way. Google, for instance, is able to, to, uh, to crawl that, to index that, and to give you a great experience, for instance, on, the, on, the, um, on your platform. So for me, it's a way to be reachable beyond ge geospatial uh, in infrastructure. So uh, yes, uh, we should use it more than we did and hopefully uh, Inspire and OGC will help us on, uh, on that way. I hope it was uh, clear and uh, it gave you a, a better vision of uh, what it is and the potential. The potential is just that it can make our life easier and less code, less transformation, and just a semantic world. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ron. Uh, any questions? Okay, I'll start. Uh, it's really hard to understand. Like er every time, <laughs> Uh, semantic web, semantic uh, things appear really hard to wrap your mind around. The only other data set, semantic data set I know that's popular, the, it's Wikidata. Yeah. You probably know that. So, yeah. And you were talking about interoperability a lot. So is there a chance, is there a use case when you could uh, like uh, connect your geo database with Wikidata? <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know what is the question, but uh, yes, uh, it's, it's, what, it's how I introduced things. Is, uh, we are talking today about Web 3.0, which is the semantic web, uh, but it, it's there since the beginning, it's the vision. So Wikidata are, are uh, represented as a graph, so it's great. And if we do the same, we, we can just plug our graph our graph will, will be automatically plugged, and that's the meaning of all these things, is that all the pieces are plugged together. Uh, I don't know if I, uh, I answer your question, so, but uh, maybe then we can, uh, from one data set, jump to something, to something, and land on, the, on Wikipedia definition of something, or, or I don't know. Oh, yeah, just a moment. Very useful representation. Thank you for that. I'm new to this field, so uh, I, I learned a lot in the the the, the, uh, the earlier slides. So, a couple of questions here. First one is, um, how do we? Uh, so, how could we leverage generative AI to make the transition easier to semantic uh, approach for Have metadata cataloging? This? Sorry, so could you repeat? How could we use uh, generative AI? The what? Generative AI. Ah, generative AI. AI. Okay, sorry. Yeah, to you know, to kind of uh, maybe uh, make it faster to adopt the the use of semantic search for uh, geospatial data. Wow. <laughs> uh, I didn't talk about the search. Do, do you mean to generate the semantic, uh, or to search, or to bruise the graph? Uh, it could be bo both of those things. So, yeah. but why don't we start first with say, when I say transition? So, you need sort of the collection of the terms, right? Yeah. Are this generative AI could be useful in that regard? Yeah, I, I mean uh, yes, in the sense of. Uh, if you need to describe something, generative AI could help you to find a way to describe it. Is it what you mean? Like it will help to find you the, the, the good, the correct ontology, the correct predicate, and, uh, and uh, will help you on the way to create your, the correct statement. And maybe with generative AI, you can just bring a bunch of information and, and tell him 
okay, could you generate a Decat semantic representation of that? And maybe it could help, at least from text, uh, if you need to extract um, unstructured data, which is the text, to structured data, which is the predicate, uh, generative AI really helps on that way. So I think it could be a good idea. Yes? Okay, thank you. Uh, just a moment. Just as a, a comment to my colleague there who asked the question, I, I played a little bit around with, with metadata and generative AI and does it need to, it, it, the only thing you need to, it, it also extracts contextual data, which is fine, like uh, return all the, you have to feed it a lot of things and it doesn't need to build the relationship because it parses it, it interprets it, so it doesn't need to create a, a graph in essence. Okay. But it can return you data like uh, return me all the layers or the IDs which are um, from South America, but the metadata contain only Brazil, for example. So in this sense, you didn't need to do any kind of relationship with it. It just sort of figured out that um, what you want to do. And I don't know how it built it. It was ChatGPT. I don't know how it built the relationship. It also could do connections between the layers in that sense. So I don't know if that answered yours or his or anybody's question, but. Um, okay, uh, any more questions? Yeah, okay then. Uh, thank you a lot, Flora. Uh, and on that, we will end.